What's going on guys, Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys another ranking. With the release of Glass, the conclusion to M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable Trilogy, I'm going to be giving you guys my ranking of M. Night Shyamalan's directed movies from worst to best. Shyamalan's technically directed 13 movies, his two other ones, Wide Awake and Praying with Anger, those won't be included in this ranking because I don't technically count those as his first breakout directed films. Those are kind of small budgeted films. But I'm going to be ranking his main budgeted films. Before I get started, let me know your guys' rankings of all of M. Night Shyamalan's directed movies. You can include those if you want in your ranking. Let me know your thoughts on my list as well. Let's have a great discussion. Coming all the way down at the bottom at number 11 is going to be The Last Airbender. This is hands down one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my entire life. I really like Avatar The Last Airbender when I watched it as a kid. I really love the show, the concept. Shyamalan completely ruined many people's childhoods with this movie. All of the characters in this movie were pronounced wrong, first of all. It's not Ung, it's Ang. And Shyamalan, with the visual effects in this movie, they looked really sloppy. The action sequences looked very cartoonish. All the performances were very underwhelming. The acting is so terrible that it just led to a really poor sloppy product. I don't think anybody in the universe likes Last Airbender, so yeah, it's definitely Shyamalan's worst film, no competition. At number 10 is After Earth, another snooze fest. Will Smith, he gives a good performance, but his character is just stupid. Jaden Smith gives an even worse performance in this film. He has so many outrageous scenes in this film. Very terrible acting from Jaden Smith. Especially, I am not a coward, you're a coward. I am not a coward. Like, who writes that type of dialogue? There's a lot of action sequence in this film that looked very dated, especially with these animals that looked really forgettable. And Shyamalan has his very stereotypical camera shots, his shaky cam with the action sequences, and After Earth just led to something that's not even memorable whatsoever. So After Earth is definitely a bad film. At number 9 is going to be Lady in the Water. Lady in the Water had beautiful visuals to it, but a really boring love story. And Bryce Dallas Howard in this movie was really awful. Like, this was one of Bryce Dallas Howard's first movies. And her character gets introduced as this lady who comes out of a pool. And she wants to bring world peace by writing this new novel, sort of. And that's just stupid. Paul Giamatti, he's not terrible. He's fine. And M. Night Shyamalan cast himself in this movie. That was not a good choice at all. Also, the twist doesn't make any sense in this movie as well. It ended up being a really sloppy product with the eagles, these garden creatures as well, and these tree creatures. Why? I, I get this is Shyamalan's type of fantasy story he told his daughters, but it did not work as a movie. At number 8 is The Happening. Nah, The Happening is not a great movie at all, but man, this movie is freaking hilarious. Like, this is one of the best unintentional comedies of all time, next to The Room. Every time I watch The Happening, I just laugh my ass off because this movie's so hilarious. It's not supposed to be hilarious. It's supposed to be this insane film where people are killing each other after this apocalypse thriller. And you can't take it seriously because it's too funny. The dialogue in this movie is so bad. Mark Wahlberg gives his worst performance to date, but he's so funny. Like, all of his lines are hilarious, especially the iconic scene with Betty Buckley. Are you gonna kill me in my sleep? What? No! Who cannot remember the doll scene? Mrs. Jones? <laughs> and the hot dog guy. The hot dog guy was also hilarious. You like hot dogs? Shyamalan, this was his state of him losing his damn mind. Like, he had no idea what to do. He just said, all right, here's the script. Now act it out. And it's one of the best comedies ever. At number seven is The Village. All right, this is a very divisive movie because I know a lot of people love The Village and a lot of people hate it. I think The Village is okay. There's a lot of good aspects to it. Bryce Dallas Howard, this was her first movie. Bryce Dallas Howard gives a good performance in here, way better than Lady in the Water. Joaquin Phoenix also gives a good performance. William Hurt might have been the standout for me. The visuals were good, the cinematography was well shot, but The Village just had a really boring love story. It was 
marketed poorly. It was marketed as a horror movie, but it was a period piece romance. With Adrian Brody's character, it's it didn't make sense. Why did he kill Joaquin Phoenix in the movie? It doesn't make sense. Sigourney Weaver was forgettable. And the twist to this movie is so stupid. Taking place in real world times. Really? Shyamalan is in this movie as well? That was stupid. The Village had a cool concept, but a disappointing ending that was just like, what? Coming in at number six is The Visit. The Visit is actually a good movie. This is Shyamalan's great film he directed since Signs in a while, but The Visit is a cool found footage movie. It's not perfect, but there are some good solid scares in here. The kids in this movie are really good. It's, it's this found footage movie where the girl's an aspiring filmmaker. She's filming this documentary of them going to visit their grandparents' house. The son wants to be a rapper, and it's a really cool concept. But man, it rips off paranormal activity. I'll just say that. The grandparents were really spooky. The grandmother is out of her mind. And it's, it's some cool parts to it. The grandfather too is crazy. And Shyamalan adds his normal twist in there that is just kinda okay. The, the shocking twist here is that those aren't their grandparents. They killed their original grandparents. I was like, okay, but it could have been better. The Visit is a good solid movie, I will say that. Shyamalan directs this very well, and it's a cool found footage movie. Alright, top five guys, coming in at number five is gonna be Signs. Alright, I know a lot of you are thinking, why is this only number five? Signs, it is a good directed film. Signs is a really well told alien invasion film. Mel Gibson gives a phenomenal performance, as well as Joaquin Phoenix. Both of those two together as brothers are great. Signs has one of the coolest tracking shots of all time. When you see the cornfield with that alien logo, it's just really cool. I love James Newton Howard's score in the film, it's really unsettling. And the hidden messages of Signs is really cool. Like, why did the aliens come here? And Mel Gibson's character in particular explaining a lot with his wife and two. The thing I didn't like about Signs was the twist. The twist was really bad. How do you kill the aliens? You spill water on them and beat them with a baseball bat. That's stupid. Shyamalan had a great story to tell and his character in the movie was okay, but Signs is a good movie. It's not perfect, but still solid. At number four is the newly released Glass. I just saw Glass tonight, guys, and my review is up on my channel. Go check that out. I thought Glass was a good solid film. M. Night Shyamalan's direction is great. The performances in this film are great. Bruce Willis, Samuel Jackson, and James McAvoy, seeing all three of those characters face to face for the first time was really solid. James McAvoy, start the Oscar hype, he's fantastic. And Shyamalan, the way he films this movie is really interesting. Some of the camera shots were, weren't perfect and the ending was so disappointing and it just led to different things that I didn't want to see happen but still Glass is solid and it is a fun time. The reason why I put this over signs is the rewatchability factor and the performances alone, especially McAvoy. Top three guys, my number three is Split. Split, I love Split. These top three movies I love. Split is a really good psychological thriller. James McAvoy is absolutely phenomenal. He was so snubbed from an Oscar nom. And re-watching Split, I absolutely loved it more than the first time I watched it. The first time I was like, eh, it's okay. But the performances in this movie are spectacular. The way Shyamalan films this movie, like 10 Cloverfield Lane, is spectacular. The score is unsettling. And the ending is one of my favorite Shyamalan twists, with it taking place in the Unbreakable franchise. And Split is just led to great things, and it's a fantastic Shyamalan movie. Coming in at number two is The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense is what broke Shyamalan out to being a phenomenal filmmaker. People were calling him the next Spielberg, and The Sixth Sense is a phenomenal psychological horror film. Bruce Willis is fantastic, but Haley Joel Osment should have won the Oscar. His performance is so good, this little kid was fantastic, and I see dead people. And that's the brilliant concept that you don't see coming the first time you watch The Sixth Sense. And Toni Collette was also phenomenal, she was robbed from the Oscar. And Shyamalan adds his great horror elements in here, there's some great jump scares, the twist comes completely out of nowhere. 
Bruce Willis was dead the whole entire movie, and yeah, Haley Joel Osment said it himself, I see dead people. And that's why The Sixth Sense is phenomenal. But, it's not my favorite Shyamalan film. Yeah, you guys probably already guessed it before you clicked on the video. My favorite Shyamalan film, I've already said it before, it's unbreakable. One of my favorite movies of all time, I've said it before multiple times, but... Shyamalan nailed it. Like, this is one of the most original films I've ever seen. David Dunn is just a cool, groundbreaking character that you fascinate with. He's a human being, but he doesn't realize he's a superhero. And the things he does is just groundbreaking. But Elijah Price as a character is so fascinating. All his dialogue are so great. The final scene always gets to me. The feeling of superhero feelings is so good. James Newton Howard's score also makes the tone so good. And this movie is so freaking underrated that a lot of people haven't seen Unbreakable, which is a shame, which you should see because it is my favorite Shyamalan film. And I think it is so good. It's one of my favorite films of all time. All right, guys, that was my ranking for all of them like Shyamalan's directed movies, 11 of them. So in the comment section below, let me know your rankings and let me know your thoughts on my list. Do you agree or you disagree? Thank you guys as always for watching this ranking and if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!